Tell people now. I didn't see that many missing when I picked mine up, and there are people sitting out here. That's why I'm wondering how many people grabbed them. Good morning, Christ community. It's good to have you here this morning. 
This is not news to you at all, but we exist to do three things as a church. We exist to prize, to portray, and to proclaim the supremacy of Christ in all things for the joy of all peoples. We as a church, we exist to trust Christ and to treasure Christ, to trust him for the impossible and to treasure him as our deepest delight. And I just want you to know, I just want to remind you that, that we gather as a people whose names were part of an eternal conversation between the persons of the Trinity before time began. I want to remind you this morning that, that we are a people whose salvation is in Christ is because our names were in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. I want to remind you this morning that, that we gather as a redeemed people this morning, and the only reason why we are redeemed is because our salvation, that our very souls, our eternal souls, were part of this Trinitarian gift exchange between the Father and Son that was exchanged before anything in the universe existed. So what that means is that what we're doing here this morning, our gathering here this morning, literally has eternal significance. your attention as we prepare to engage our hearts in worship of this living, all-satisfying God to Psalm 1611. It's on screen. But I want you to notice what he says the path of life is. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. It's a path of life. The meaning of life is fullness of joy. You, you can't get any more full than fullness. The meaning of life, the path of life, is, is pleasures forever. You can't get any longer in duration than forever, can you? is the very meaning of life, is the eternal and infinite enjoyment of God himself. And you see, that's why we gather this morning, to experience that, to enjoy God for the supremely valuable treasure that he is, but not just that. We do not come to church on a Sunday morning to escape from the world, but precisely to be equipped to engage the world. So let's stand, let's sing together about the God who satisfies.
question and answer and then we'll get to this week's so last week we talked about the chief and highest end of man and what that is and what we responded to that with is that man's chief and highest end is to glorify God and to fully enjoy him forever and church what what's so cool about this is that our pursuit of happiness of joy peace any goodness that this world has to offer is the same pursuit uh, as our pursuit of God's glory. Because in God's glory, we get to experience all the good things that he has planned for us. And that's going to be kind of a segue into this week's question. Um, if you could go to the next slide, which is, how does it appear that there is a God? So what we're going to do is we're going to read together the answer, and then we're going to get back into saying. So, how does it appear that there is a God? The very light of nature in man and the works of God declare plainly that there is a God, but his word and spirit only do sufficiently reveal him unto men for their salvation. And so church, what this is saying is that we see evidence of our God all around in nature, in each other, in the works that he's done in our own hearts, but only by his word and spirit do we have evidence because church, the scripture is our absolute truth. It is our foundation. But what this is saying more than that, scripture is how we get to experience and know the goodness of God. Scripture is our understanding that enables us to enjoy God. And so church, I wanna encourage each and every one of you, if you are lacking some joy, some peace, some comfort that you are looking to get from God, it is only by scripture you're able to grasp that. And so church, if we want the joy, and if we want the peace of God, we must be people of the word. The Bible is our key to every good thing that God has in store for us. Our highest happiness is found in the holiness produced from the word. And church, that's what we're going to sing about now. We are going to sing and celebrate that we serve a God who has made a way, a tangible way for us to know joy. So let's sing together. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She Oh, uh-huh. 
Take of the Lord's Supper again together. It has been a while, and this is the first time that we've been able to do it since the whole uh, pandemic has hit. Now, we are not going to be passing the elements this morning. The elements are available over uh, at the table near the door, and if you uh, forgot to pick one up, just go ahead and get up, nonchalantly walk over there, look out the door like you're waiting for someone who's late, and uh, <laughs> grab one or two of these, however many you need. And uh, you can return to your seat. Wow, the pastor. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah, I didn't mean to call you out like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, beloved in Christ. We now come to the portion of our worship where we have great joy in partaking the Lord's Supper together. Hear the invitation of, the, of Jesus to you. He says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
The Lord's Supper is the commemoration and proclamation of Christ's death until he comes again. The elements of bread and cup are representative of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is a commemoration in that we remember what Christ accomplished for us through his substitutionary death. It is also a proclamation of the sufficiency of his death on our behalf. Christ has done for us that which we could not do for ourselves. No amount of good works could ever save us from our sins. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can enter heaven but through him. On the night before his death, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples. Hear from the gospel according to Luke. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The Lord's Supper is not to be taken lightly. We should celebrate it with a great sense of weightiness and awe. We are called to focus our minds on Jesus and especially on his historical work of dying for us. We are told, do this in remembrance of me. We are to consciously call to mind the person of Jesus as he once lived, the work of Christ as he died and rose again, and what his death means for the forgiveness of our sins. The Lord's Supper is a stark reminder, time after time, that Christianity is rooted in historical facts. Jesus lived. He had a human body. He died publicly on a Roman cross in the place of sinners, so that anyone who believes in him might be rescued from the wrath of God. That happened once and for all in history. There is no continuing sacrifice of Christ. On the cross, he declared, it is finished. The sacred scriptures teach us that the Lord's Supper is open to all Christians. It is open to all who have repented of their sins and put their trust in Christ Jesus for salvation. The Bible also clearly teaches that before eating and drinking, the believer must properly examine himself or herself. If you are a Christian and willing to participate in this careful inspection, I invite you to our Lord's table. There are some people who should not eat and drink with us. The primary reason is that they will be adding to their guilt before God. One of the key claims that we make in this meal is that we belong to Jesus, that our salvation depends on him alone. He is our only hope. He is our personal savior. This meal symbolizes those things. Therefore, it would be disingenuous, if not something close to mockery of God, to eat and drink if there is no reality in your life to those claims. So to prepare ourselves to partake of the supper, let us not only confess known sin, but let us seek deeper understanding of the holy purpose of this meal. Let us pray. Holy Father, help us to examine ourselves rightly so we do not eat and drink the cup in an unworthy manner, thereby mocking the precious body and blood of our Savior. Today, O oh Lord, search and know our hearts Try and know our thoughts so to reveal wickedness and sin within us. Help us to more fully understand and know what Christ has done for us through his death. And we now confess our personal sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. with you.
Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us remember our Lord together. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us remember our Lord together. Having searched our hearts, recalled Christ's sacrifice, and identified with him anew, we take courage from his word and glory in what he has done for us. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. It is in his death that we have our life. The scriptures say, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. To the one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. Let us pray. Most merciful Father, we give to you all praise, thanksgiving, and glory. For it has pleased you, O Father, out of your great mercies to grant unto us wretched sinners so excellent a gift and treasure. You gave to us fellowship and company of your dear Son, Christ Jesus our Lord, whom you have delivered to death for us and raised from the dead. Praise and glory be to your name forever. And O great God of truth, we thank you for your holy scriptures, their precepts, promises, directions, and light. In them may we learn more of Christ, be enabled to retain his truth, and have the grace to follow. Mighty God, we worship you this morning for your majesty, wisdom, and power. It was by your word the universe was created. You spoke and all things came into existence. Great and wonderful are your works, O Lord. Powerful and true are your ways. We worship you this morning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the divine trinity. May your glory extend to the ends of creation, and may your name be praised among all the peoples of the earth. O merciful God, we now confess our sin to you. We confess that we have transgressed your holy law and have offended your righteous prerogative. Lord, we are in need of daily cleansing and forgiveness. Help us, O oh God, to see our sin as you see it. May we be like Isaiah when, he, when confronted with the vision of your holiness, he immediately recognized the ugliness of his own sin. May we only judge ourselves in light of the perfections of your Son and not according to our own standards. Forgive us. We confess we have not walked according to your ways, but in rebellion and selfishness. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and keep us in the way everlasting. Lord, we pray for Christ Community Bible Church. We pray that you make us a people whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. May we keep your testimonies and seek you with our whole heart. Lead us so we do no wrong and so that we walk in your ways. Help us, Father, to be steadfast and to keep our eyes on Christ and his word. Lord, grant us unity and steadfastness as we strive for the Great Commission. Teach us and help us to deny ourselves and to take up our cross daily. O oh God, may we never be ashamed of the gospel, knowing that to live is Christ and to die is gain. O oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, you command us to pray for our civil leaders. We lift them up to you 
that you would give them wisdom, discernment, and godly fear to lead in righteousness. We pray for the president, all members of Congress and the senators, our governor, and all others in authority. We pray for peace and unity in our nation. Help us, O oh God, as we struggle with racial division, violence, and a great pandemic. We pray for safety of our nation from injustice, bloodshed, and sickness. We ask that the Holy Spirit move in our nation again to bring about another awakening and turning to the true God. We ask you to do what only you can do for a nation, for our community, and for people. So, oh, loving God, we pray for this world and the virus that has been unleashed on your creation. Lord, by your sovereign and mighty hand, we pray that you would stop the spread and heal the sick. By your mercy, O oh God, grant to us and to all people relief from this terrible sickness. Keep us safe from it and prevent its spread. We ask that you would grant supernatural wisdom and knowledge so we can prevent and cure this disease. In the midst of it, and at its conclusion, we will give you praise. For even in these days, you are worthy of all praise and honor and worship. And we now lift up to those, those who are part of our own body of believers. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are grieving, those who are hurting, those who are suffering physical ailments, Lord. We lift them up to you. Grant grace, peace, and healing, we pray. Help us to be instruments of your grace in their lives. O oh, Lord God Almighty, who equipped all the saints with your gracious blood-bought gifts, hear our prayers and grant us these requests. By your grace, we ask that we worship you this morning in spirit and truth, through our singing, giving, and time in your word. We ask that you equip your servant Jared to proclaim your word with power, clarity, and love. We pray for the unity of the saints. And we pray the glory of your kingdom will be advanced through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, Father, may your name be praised. You sent your only son to die on the cross for our sins. He came that the corruptible might be made incorruptible to exchange our shame for his glory. We pray that you will bestow upon us kindness towards others, forgiveness towards our enemies, peace towards our neighbors, compassion towards those in need, and brotherly love and unity towards our fellow Christians. We pray all of this through your Son and by your Spirit. Amen. Now hear from the word of the Lord. We are in Psalm 119. We're beginning in verse 1. Begin in verse 1. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. Do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I, sh I will not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all of your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. out in the garden and feeding the we feed the wild birds and Tommy was busy and he couldn't do it for me so that kind of got my back to hurt and, so, yeah so, anyway but, take care of your back yeah say hi to Gloria 
Say hi to Gloria on camera because they're watching. Say hi, Gloria. Hi, Gloria. No, I didn't do anything. Hi. I saw her the other day and, and she said, Say hi to me. I said, I'll see. I'll try. Say hi to me in camera. What did you do? Do it. You're doing. You're all doing okay otherwise. I need to put this in my calendar. Hello!